The Ingersoll Cadman Show presents the bridge between faith, entrepreneurship, and leadership. My name is Ingozi Cadmus and I'm a mental health and leadership expert. I represent the average woman and equip women of faith to walk in their divine calling, master their thoughts and love themselves so that they can level up spiritually, mentally and financially. Oh my gosh, this is episode one. I know that in six months time, I'm going to look back at this recording and the video and be like, ah, I shouldn't have been doing that. But you know what? It's all about the learning. Welcome to the Inga Z Cadmus show. And I am your host, Inga Z Cadmus. So this is the first episode. And the first episode is all about reclaiming my voice. And what do I mean about reclaiming my voice? Well, this video cast, as they call podcast plus video, is a literal manifestation of a dead dream. What do I mean by that? Well, if you told me a year ago I would be doing this, I would laugh at you. I probably would say God forbid. <laughs> One of the things that is not only true for me, but true for many of the women that will listen to this, is that when we want to do something that seems beyond us, seems incredible, seems hard, seems difficult, something that you have to put yourself out there, if you're like me, you spend a lot of time questioning, is it for you? Okay. So let me be much more specific and much more clear. Essentially, I spent a large amount of my life not wanting to do anything that makes me really visible. I kind of want to be obscure. You know, you don't, you know, I don't have the clout bug. I'm not trying to be famous. I've always, I kind of stopped, I never really wanted to be famous. You know, when I wanted to be an actress back in the days, I wasn't thinking about fame, I just wanted to act, right? And then I realised, ah, oh, I don't think I'm greatly talented. And also, I just had this vision of, I don't want to be famous. I don't want to be seen by public. I don't want to be judged by public. I don't want to be ridiculed by public. I don't want the responsibility that is required and needed for the public eye. And I guess that thought became a belief, and that belief became my reality and became my expectation. So... YouTube podcasting was a no-no, was an absolute no. And it wasn't just, oh, I don't want to do it. I didn't have a desire. There was, I've never had a desire to be on YouTube. I've never had a desire to do a podcast. I'm literally the person that's, that's, that never looked at other podcasts on YouTube and going, oh my God, I would love to do that. I could do that one day. No, I just wasn't not that person. So the last couple of years, it really has been about reclaiming my voice and meaning reclaiming what the enemy stole. You know, the, the Bible says in John 10, 10, that the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy. There must be a difference between kill and destroy, because when you think about kill, you think that person is destroyed, but destroyed is like annihilation, <laughs> like gone, like it never existed, Right. And then kill was obviously like dead in it. And then stealing is taking something that's not yours. So I, I, I kind of think that, yeah, I would say that the enemy had me in a, in a stronghold or let's say in a chokehold where I did speak up many times. And most people would even say, oh my gosh, Ingazi, you're so confident. I never felt that way. But they'll say you're confident and they would, you know, people say, oh, you're a really good speaker. And whether that's true or not, I didn't feel like I was speaking authentically from a place of, I wasn't assured in my speaking. I, Not how I'm speaking now, not the resoluteness, the kind of certainty, the potency and authenticity um, was not aligned. I was definitely authentic at times when I spoke and I was definitely potent at times when I spoke, but I don't think they converged a lot of the times because I was either or other. I could speak potently, but I may not have been authentic. What I mean is that it's not that I wasn't being real, 
but I was constantly questioning and doubting myself as I'm speaking. So I'm saying things that I know to be true, that I know because I've studied. But as I'm saying it, I'm literally double-minded. I'm literally in my head going, why am I saying this is rubbish? So there's a level of inauthenticity in myself. Not that I was inauthentic in the things that's been said. So um, one of the reasons why this is even a miracle, in all honesty, this is a literal miracle, is because I'm not doing this, right? Because I just want to have a podcast and a, and a YouTube channel. I'm doing this because I have a greater call in my life. And you have to use wisdom. The wisdom is that the reality is God has mediums in place to get his message out. Back, back, back in the day, it was the printing press. Back in the day, it was the tablets. Back in the day, it was the papyrus. Um, it's basically leaves that they, they wrote a lot of the Bible in, right? So the Lord always uses the technology of the day to communicate his message because his message has to get out. So... I recognise that it's not to do whether I like podcasting or not. And to be fair, I love talking and sharing the message now because I had to accept that I've been called to this. I had to accept that my voice is unique. I had to accept my voice needs to be heard. I stopped running away from my call. And once I accepted my call, I realised that I have to use the mediums of today, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, podcasting. And the thing about podcasting and YouTube that is a plus for me is that it gives me space to speak. If you don't know, you will get to know that I can't say something profound in 15, 30 or 60 seconds. Those people that can do that, I give you ratings, but they can't do that. I need time. Now, I can be succinct if need be, like if I'm doing an interview or a situation, but my idiosyncrasy and my authenticity is me being me like sometimes you just gotta cut me and say like get to the point but essentially I'm a bit long-winded um but I'm not wasting words I'm trying to find the right words because I believe um not only are words powerful but it's important to be processed I don't want to be misunderstood because every word conveys a picture so even when I say reclaiming my voice that might have a different picture for each person. So I have to define it for myself and for you. So you understand my vantage point, my perspective, because you're going to have your vantage point and your perspective. So the journey to reclaiming my voice was taking back what was my, my voice, recognizing and accepting that I have got a voice, that God loves my voice and he loves and he wants and he desires me to share. No, not even want desire. He commanded me. It is a command and I must obey, right? Delayed obedience is disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. So my friends, we got to obey. So part of this as well was, you know, and I, I don't know, that I know there's studies out there. I've got a, I don't know what you call it, is it a lower tambourine? I've got a deeper voice, right? A lot of us black women... We have deeper voices than other, you know, ethnicities and races potentially. So I think one of the difficulties was during my psychotherapy training, I was told by my supervisor, if she ever sees this, yes, you know who you are, that I should essentially adjust my voice. So I should speak like this, much softer. And I will be very honest, when she said that, it hit me, but I had to quickly absorb it um suppress it and keep on going because what i wanted to pass i was like look i don't have the energy to go back and forth so i spoke like this during my sessions you know and it was only after i realized the impact of that look i'm not going to say she um her her statement um stopped me from speaking because i was already in that process but it didn't help it kind of further reinforced that you should not be speaking. So the last two to three years has really been an upward climb to reclaim my voice. Now, I know that anyone here listening most likely has or is, or maybe um, has overcome this. But I think it's a really big issue because if a lot of people reclaim their voice, we would have, it's not even about more podcasts, we just have more people speaking, right? 
more people being true to themselves, speaking out. But a lot of us hide, shy away, spend most of the time chatting on our WhatsApp groups, you know. Or maybe you're, you're the people that are Twitter, you know, you're, you're, you're Twitter, uh, what do you call it, social media warriors on Twitter, you know, typing. Hope not. So um, I wanted to kind of express that. One of the other things I think it's really important to say is that I'm a very dynamic personality. <laughs> I've got a very extroverted personality. I'm not extroverted, but I've got a very extroverted personality when I'm like, you know, talking and interacting and stuff like that. But once the camera comes on, it kind of, I feel subdued. And I, I find it's a weird effect. Literally, if the camera went off right now, I'll be doing that. Now, I think over time, this is the first episode. That's why I am happy to say that in six months time, when I watch this back, I can't wait to see the progression. Yeah, so reclaiming my voice isn't becoming perfect, isn't becoming uh, my voice now is amazing. I'm still going to sharpen it, right? I, I'm, I'm sure when I look back on this and if people watched it, they will say, you know what, you shouldn't have done this, you shouldn't have done that. It's all about learning and progressing. In six months' time, I will be better. In a year's time, I'll be better, right? Reclaiming my voice is about starting now. It's about doing it now, speaking now, and then reviewing as you go along. Because instead, we spend a lot of time reviewing even before we've started. How am I going to sound? Am I going to like how I sound? Am I going to like how I look? Oh, you know what? Just do it. Do it and see how it is after. Do it and then review it after. Right? Do it and review it after. Sometimes you've just got to do it. You know, the way I've approached a lot of things in my life of recent is just do and then think about the consequences after. Now, I don't mean making rash decisions or impulsive decisions, but things that I know will induce fear and anxiety and worry and make me go, maybe I shouldn't do that, but I know I need to do that. I know it's God's will. I then do it. And then I consider what I've done after. But by that time, it's too late and I got to do it. I got to push through. And it's such an exhilarating feeling because at the end of the day, I know I'm doing what I've been called to do. So... This episode is about reclaiming my voice. I want to ask these questions because I think it's so imperative and important. And, you know, if you're listening to this as you're working out, <laughs> as you're listening to this, as you're exercising, that's the same thing as working out, right? As you're listening to this on your drive to work um, or you're watching this, you know, as you're cleaning the house, you know, answer yourself these questions. What is stopping you from speaking out? What is stopping you from sharing your message? You know, every single person's got a message. Every child of the king has a message. You've got a story, woman of faith, woman of valor. You've got a story. Now, I know the enemy has made you feel that every story is unimportant, that you are unimportant, that he was going to listen to you. It's so funny because if the enemy can, can cloud your mind and confuse you of who you are, he's essentially one. He ain't even got to kill you, mate. He has just got to create and distort your reality my reality was distorted for a very long time about who i am so reclaiming my voice is reclaiming who i am it's surrendering fully to the lord and saying you know what lord i accept who i am you did not make me perfect but you made me whole in my weakness christ is perfected you don't want me perfect you want me weak because in my weakness i surrender in my weakness i know who i am because i know whose i am and I know that it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by what the Spirit saved the Lord. And in him, I can be perfected. In him, I can become mature. So this first podcast, and look, this is what I said to myself, I said to my husband, you know what? The funny thing, no one's really going to listen to the first podcast. It probably will be after I gain attention and gain attraction that people will come back and listen to it. So I was like, why am I even that worried? Because to be fair, other than me and maybe a few friends, no one's going to listen to it because I haven't established it yet. You know, I need to do a number of things, a number of promotions. I was like, why am I? It's what we do, right? We get so worried about something. But literally, if you've got to start a YouTube channel or a podcast on Instagram, your first post, you might get one like. You're worrying about the first picture that nobody's even going to see potentially until a few pictures, until you understand the algorithm. I'm not saying that to disappoint you and to dissuade you and to make you feel like, oh, so what's the point? It's a reality that you're actually worrying about something that's very likely not to even happen until probably after you gain traction and people may go back 
to the first episode. To be fair, this is going to be repeated again. When I get a bigger audience and I start to grow, I'm going to talk about this because it's my story. And I'll probably talk about it better because I'm much more comfortable. I'm less nervous. So I'm saying all of this so that this is a reminder to myself in six months' time that you did this. You did this. Saturday, the 23rd of July, you recorded your first video cast, something that you could not even imagine doing, something that a year and a half ago you would have laughed at, something that you just did not, this was not your dream, yeah? My dream was to be wealthy in secret, like nobody knows me, like I'm not really known other than with friends and family, but that's not necessarily my path, that's not necessarily the journey that the Lord wants me on and I've accepted it and I've accepted my voice deep and all. Funnily enough, a client of mine said it was very soothing. So I hope that my voice has soothed your airwaves and has soothed your soul. And I love my voice. I love it now. I love the deepness, the gravitas and everything that comes with it. So that has been the first episode. Well done, me. Well done, well done and well done, Ingazi. You will take the next step into your destiny. And to you, in six months' time, Ingazi, that will be January, January the 23rd, when you watch back. Make sure you watch this back, because I know you don't want to watch things back. Watch it back. Hubby, make sure I watch it back. When I watch it back, I probably have tears in my eyes. Regardless of how many people listen to me then, or what, just the fact that I did this, that's successful. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. It is not about the destination, but it is about the journey. And I'm not there yet, whatever success would be when I get 20,000 downloads or whatever. It's the fact that I am standing here doing this, well, actually sitting now. I am sitting now recording a podcast, putting that out into the world where people will be able to listen to it and be helped, but there'll be people that will listen to it and, and critique it, and it is fine. I welcome it, not really. I welcome it, not really. So, my name is Ingazi. This is the Ingazi Cadmus Show, reclaiming my voice, reclaiming your voice. The enemy has no power over you. Do not be ignorant of his devices, and I shall see you in the next episode. Ooh, what an amazing show. If I may say so myself, well, thank you for listening to the Ingers and Cadmus Show podcast. So, for all of you women of faith, for all of you women who are listening week after week and resonate with what I'm talking about, feel lost, feel uncertain, know they're called for something greater, but they're currently stuck in what is comfortable. They're stuck in the familiar. And you honestly want to get out of that. You want to be all that God has created you to be. Sis, I got you covered. Yeah. I've got an amazing, amazing mentorship that I provide um, to you. women of faith like yourself to help them level up. Essentially equip them with the skills that they need to fulfill their assignment on earth. And to shift their mindset to shift their mindset have a complete metanoia have a complete transformation so if that sounds like something you're interested in click the link on the website and yeah follow the instructions and i can't wait to see you in the community so like share subscribe <laughs> that's youtube but for the podcast lovers download it share it you know tweet it Review it, all of that good stuff, and I shall see you in the next podcast. <laughs>